Okay, uh, we want to keep going. Uh, we have plenty of time to look at the demo. The, uh, the next team is team number 11, uh, Smart Energy Monitoring System. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. As Professor Pisano already mentioned, we're team C for Smart Electric Energy Monitoring. And uh, my name is Caesar, and we are Pisano. And uh, so, with the uh, most of you probably know, there's a green movement due to the energy crisis happening today. And uh, on the large yeah. scale, yes. the course we create is going through major transformations. Yeah, we're gonna leave. And in order to become smart, mm -hmm. this is being achieved by the use of renewal sources and uh, smart devices. And we wanted to offer a small scale solution for households to decrease their cost and energy consumption. So we decided to build the 21st century at home. Uh, in the market, there's currently uh, these devices, which are, as you can see, power strips, which um, have a big footprint. So we can believe we believe that we can do significantly better by creating an adapter that plugs in directly to the wall. <coughs> All right, so the, the objective of our project uh, was to create a device that monitors power consumption for uh, individual appliances in your house. Uh, some key features uh, that we wanted to include was the ability to remotely shut on and off uh, your appliance, as well as track energy patterns over uh, a long period of time. In order to meet these objectives, we felt that we needed two separate deliverables, one hardware and one software. Uh, the hardware was a smart power adapter. Uh, this consisted of a custom PCB that we made as well as a custom case. And the software side was a management website uh, in which uh, our database website uh, was created. So here's a picture, uh, here's two pictures of our finished adapters. Uh, the picture on the left, uh, you can see the, the, the wall plugs coming out of it. That's because that's the side that's going to interface with the wall and plug into the wall. And on the opposite side are the holes for plugs to go in. That's the side of the appliance that we plugged into. Uh, so here's our full functional block diagram. Um, the input is 120 volts AC coming out of the wall. Uh, from there it goes into two different AC to DC converters. Uh, it converts 120 volts AC to 3.3 volts DC, as well as another one that converts to 12, uh, converts to 12 volts DC. 3.3 uh, volts goes to our mic controller and Wi-Fi chip and our 12 volts goes to our relay circuitry. Um, also, the 120 volts uh, is being sent into our current sensors, which reads the current. And from there, uh, communicates with our microcontroller, and via UR, talks to our uh, Wi-Fi chip, uh, which then sends the data to our website. So that's kind of a big overview of our project, but now uh, Kelvin will talk about individual components. All right, so here are a few key components. We have microcontroller brains, Chosen MSG430 runs on 3.3 volts DC. Uh, low power, relatively easy to uh, program for. And it receives data from the current sensor, sends it out via UART to the Wi Fi chip, which then sends it out to the website. And it sends signals to the relay circuitry to shut on and off the, the individual outlets. So next is the high current relay cir circuitry. Uh, we have solid state relays that receive a signal from the microphone switch on and off the high current relay. The reason we did this is because the high current relays require you to drive coil with a significant amount of current that the microcontroller cannot supply. And this gives us obviously the ability to turn on and off individual outlets on our adapter. We have current sensors. They output an analog voltage proportional to how much current is being driven through them. We have the Wi-Fi chip, receives 3.3 volts, also low power. And it establishes the connection between the smart adapter and the TCP server and transmits the data obviously from the microcontroller. We also have USB to UART circuitry on here. And the purpose of this is to turn the UART signals into USB so you can program 
your Wi-Fi chip with your, with your home network parameter. Say you get a special out of the box, you need to associate with your network, you need to do this with, the, with your PC. It's a hardware schematic, it's uh, a little hard to read here, so we have, we'll have it displayed at our table if you want to take a closer look. But you can see our relays that are in the middle of my controller and the Wi-Fi chip as well. Here's a PCB layout of our project. Um, the, on the left, all layer, middle, top layer, and then bottom layer. Notice the Wi-Fi chip on the top layer. It's on the left. It has no traces on, underneath it. This is so we have um, optimal like, chance of sending out signals without interference. Also, our microcontroller is on the bottom right, so it also receives less interference. And notice the large blue planes on the right. Those are where our high current relays are sitting. Normally, to uh, run current, you need large traces of more current. So 20 amps is a lot of current, so we need to use a set to accommodate everything. Right. So now I'm going to talk to the management website section of the project. So we have a TCP server that connects to the smart adapters and receives the data from them and sends the commands. The data received is saved into a MongoDB database. Uh, then we have an HTTP server to handle the requests from the uh, HTML website, HTML JavaScript. Uh, the website can issue commands which are then sent to the TCP server. Uh, I built the whole architecture using the JavaScript uh, environment, so Node.js is designed for scalable web applications. The programs are written in JavaScript using an event-driven asynchronous and without architecture. Um, so with JavaScript and Node.js, I have the ability to use one language to write the HTTP server, TCP server, and website. Um, so the TCP server listens on port 8080, can detect, it detects adapters and saves your MAC address for future recognition. Uh, it can accept as many connections as possible at any given time, and as long as there's enough storage in your machine. Uh, so the data strings we receive have the following format, so it's a 12-digit MAC address, followed by the output uh, identifier, so output 1 or output 2, and then the ATC current data. If the string we receive matches our requirements, it gets saved to the database. Uh, so the database. MongoDB is an open source document oriented database. Uh, data is saved as JSON documents. Uh, so all the requests, saves, queries, anything you can think of are written in JavaScript. Uh, so it fits perfectly our architecture and it's like a seamless integration with Node.js. Uh, so for every adapter that connects, we create a new collection. And within this collection, we save the MAC address of the adapter and then the ATC data in you know, either output one or output two. The object ID is an object generated uh, field that contains a timestamp and lots of other stuff we don't need. Uh, so for the HTTP server, I, we use an MVC framework. Uh, so the requests come into the server, the router uh, sends it to the different controllers, which are technically different web pages and each web page is going to perform a certain uh, query into the database. Everything goes back and into our review box, which is the HTML template, and then every page will display different data depending on what you selected. So this is an overview of the website, pretty straightforward. And the management website is designed to uh, only for the two adapters, but the TCP server can accept thousands of adapters. Since we're only building two devices for our project, we could build it you know, and scale it if you want in the future, but for the scale purpose of the project, this is how it looks. So you can either turn on or turn off the adapters by pressing your know, button, each of on the adapter. And so this is the graphing of the current data we're receiving. So if any of you have ever used Google Finance, this is what the chart looks like. So you can just scroll over the data, and zoom in on a specific date, and then uh, we also display the total consumption time. 
the electricity consumed and the cost to the user on top. Uh, so that's how the graphing looks like. Then we have a timer function, so you can set the turn on, turn off time on each optic for every adapter. You just you know go ahead and put in your time and submit the form. And then the final setting is the price feature. You come, you enter your price on depending on your local uh, kilowatt hour of electricity cost for your location, and you just submit it. We're trusting the user in the right format, and that's it. So this is our case for our for our project. <coughs> um, the final so we have two cases. Uh, we designed them in uh, SolidWorks, a 3D printing, uh, 3D printing program. Our first case we printed in plastic, and our second case we printed in acrylic. Um, so right here, these top two and the circle right here are the three uh, plugs that will go into the wall. The, these two right here are the female part of the plugs that will accept the um, duct lines that you're plugging in. And this big square down here uh, is for the ground of the device you're plugging in. It's pretty much just a square piece of metal with a circle on it, so it'll take the plug in. Uh, we have four standoffs on each corner of the PCB to keep it off the bottom of the case. And we have a square right here for our rocker switch, which um, uh, determines if we're in program mode or uh, run mode. Uh, so here's the top of our case. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing, just the opposite. So we have two uh, wells right here that hold the plugs that go into the wall in place when it's, when it's placed over the bottom of the case. Uh, these two right here are where the two female ends go into, so that will take in the plug that you're plugging in. And uh, we are pulling the case together by these four, uh, there's four holes right here. On this slide back here, there's four tabs. So pretty much it being placed on top of each other, we'll just snap together. And uh, for looking forward, um, we're going to improve the user interface between the, the user and our product. Uh, we're going to pre-decide the PCB by using 15 amp uh, relays, and we're planning on going mobile using mobile apps so you can monitor uh, your power consumption over uh, there. Thank you. I'd like to thank the ECU staff and uh, everybody that helped us do this project.
terms of requirements, what's the weight between monitoring versus control? Would, 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 would having monitoring be 90% of the solution, or you really need to have control? Uh, you want, it's, pretty, it's pretty much 50-50 because another issue with our project was safety, so that if you forget to turn something off, then you can go into our website and you can turn off the appliance. So it's pretty much, it was pretty much 50 -50. But if it was energy saving, that was, that was the problem, which is the problem. If you want to, in terms of people's mind, being able to turn something off and remembering to just the knowledge, wouldn't the knowledge just be in and of itself with a huge piece of information? Uh, yes, yeah, so it would. But yeah, and also, I think it, it was also the, uh, the security was also a big thing. I think that saved as well. Being able to turn it off. But also, the yeah. timer setting. So, you know, vampire power is a main cause for all our homes. So, if you know that between 9 a.m. and you know, 5 p.m., you will get home, you could set a timer on all your devices to turn off all the power. And you know, this will bring your cost to effectively zero for the time you're at home. So this is a feature to decrease your costs if you know we're really concerned about costs. So I, maybe I misunderstood earlier. Did you say the relays you're using have to be powered? To oh no, uh, the yeah, it's only powered momentarily. Okay. It's dry. It's in yeah, it's a yeah, dry current. Did you did you guys measure the power consumption of the module itself? Uh, we didn't include it though, the current or the power consumption of the volume itself. Uh, if it was running full tilt, which it would be, it'd be less than half of what that was. That's, that's if your power is spoiled. I'm just concerned about if you're looking um, towards scalability yeah. of this and that can kind of add up. Yeah. Uh, when it's idle state, it's But recently, in the last few months, I had a project on uh, one of the crowdfunding websites, and someone took a very, very similar product, which you can actually buy right now on Amazon, I think, which costs about 80 bucks or something. So it's a market that's evolving, and it's a pretty recent market. But at the time we started the project, it wasn't as much hype. Thank you.